In our final video of lecture two on the scientific process in chemistry, we'll be finishing off talking about those chemical bonds by looking at a chemical bond per se, but actually more so an interaction, we like to call it. Um, and this one we'll call uh, chemical bonds, let's say, if you have room underneath chemical bonds too, you can certainly write it there. But this is just an extension of chemical bonds. These are called Van der Waals, and they say interactions. A very small component of the chemical bonds part of the lecture, but still important because these are actually defined as nonpolar electrically neutral molecules. Electrically, electric neutral, excuse me, neutral molecules are involved in this process. They're nonpolar electrically neutral molecules. Um, interestingly enough, Van der Waals interactions involve regions of weak, positive, and or negative charge. So there's a bunch of regions, there's specific areas in which you see Van der Waals interactions happening because there's a collection of positive or negative charges. Um, this region is usually a sh very short distance. So these are short distances that are covered for these types of interactions. And uh, lastly, these are weak. There is are very weak interactions. That's why they're not even called bonds, um, but important if there are lots. So once again, in unison, they're very important. And sort of a way to understand why these are important, but uh, let's just write this down. Important if there are lots. Um, sort of an application of Van der Waals interactions. Oops, forgot to spell this with an L. Van der Waals interactions is that um, the gecko, um, it actually has the ability to walk on walls because of Van der Waals interactions. That's how I like to remember it. These nonpolar electrically neutral molecules on the sort of cusp of the gecko's foot and limbs allow it to walk on walls.